Have you ever looked at your entire watercolor collection and said, I will never in my lifetime be able to use all of this paint? Also, how long exactly would it take to use up all this paint? That is a question that I'm going to start answering in today's video. Let's get started. So this is obviously going to be a long-term project, so we're not gonna have all the answers in today's video, but we're going to get a good start on it. And for this little experiment, I'm going to be doing this two ways. I have this Hemi Mia watercolor set. This has 18 colors in it here that you can see, and I wanna see how long it takes to use up this entire palette of paint. So yes, I will start to run out of certain colors, and we'll just have to do monochrome paintings after that, because that's how that's gonna work. But I also wanna answer how long will it take to use up a professional grade paint? So I'll be doing another series in other videos for that one using a half pan of professional grade watercolor paint. So lots to look forward to on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below if you are new. This should be a very interesting journey and I'm pretty curious how long this is actually going to take. So we'll be looking at two different things for this little experiment. First is time. How long exactly will it take to use up this entire palette of paint? So not only that, how many paintings or how many square inches of painting will you have to do in order to use up this amount of paint? I can't wait, let's get started. All right, just to refresh your memory about this cute little set that we are playing and experimenting with today, it is a trifold palette, at least that's what I'm calling it, and the bottom folds completely flat under there so you can have it open just like this or you can open it up and have extra mixing space that is absolutely flat on the table. So it's a really cool palette. A lot of people like to buy the palette, take the paint out that it comes with and put in their own paint. But instead of prying out this paint, which I have been told by a lovely subscriber that that is not really possible. <laughs> it's very glued in and I don't wanna just scrape it out. It worries me to waste paint and I'm going to use it up. And it fits right into my little experiment that I've been dying to do for months and months. How long will it take to use up all our watercolors? All we have done with this set so far is create our swatch sheet. So this is pretty small. We have put our swatch sheet in the window for the light fast test. And we did this picture. This is basically eight and a half by 11. So we will incorporate all of this square footage or square inches and the swatching square inches and all of that into how long it will take and how much painting will you have to do to use that up. So we'll take that into consideration. One thing that I wanted to mention is when I was doing that big painting I just showed you, I noticed that the paint flaked off of the palette. And I thought that was just because this is less expensive paint, not as high of quality. So that was Interesting. However, I have been teaching my watercolor class with Daniel Smith paints and look it flakes off too So it's not necessarily a feature of cheap watercolor. I think it's just the slick surface of the palette that this is on For today's first experiment today We're just going to be in doing one additional painting to try and use up some paint and I wanted to use this Strathmore paper that I got for a Christmas present from my best friend. It is cold press, 100% cotton, 140 pound paper in size eight by 10. So what I have done, I've taken a sheet out from there and I have just taped it using my regular masking tape, which I know isn't good. I'm just trying to use it up, just trying to use it up. Right here, regular masking tape, super old. It always messes up when I try and pull it off, but I'm using it up. And I think I'm going to start with, I'm not sure, but I tend to use these Cotman Winsor & Newton ones here. I always say that backwards. These Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes because they came with like the first set of paints I ever bought and you know, you kind of get used to things and I like them. They work great. Anyway, I already have hair all over my paper. Dang animals. <laughs> so well, yeah, there are gonna be a couple of variables in this little experiment because you know, the paint is different quality. Some is softer than others, so. Basically, based on the binder, you might be able to pull out a lot more paint with your brush a lot more quickly than other brands. So yeah, this isn't gonna be a perfect experiment, but I think it's sure gonna be fun, and it'll give us a general idea of how long it will take to use up all our watercolors. So I'm really excited for that, and I suspect that today's painting, because I'm only doing an eight by 10, I'm so incredibly short on time. Do you guys know the feeling? <laughs> you probably do, but I wanted to get this started, so I have to squeeze this in. But anyway, 
I'm only using basically reds in this painting. I'll have to use this orange to get the coral and stuff that I want. Maybe that one too, but we'll see how that works out. So I suspect that after today's painting, again, because I was saying it was just an eight by 10 here, we're gonna use hardly any paint at all. So uh, one of my viewers, Eileen, hi Eileen. <laughs> she paints every single day and it just is so inspiring to see that. And so maybe I can try to incorporate a little bit of this Himimiya painting into an everyday kind of practice, or at least I'm shooting for five days a week because I don't want this experiment to take the rest of my life like it probably normally would otherwise if you were just using your watercolors in a regular fashion. Whew. Actually, I bet you Eileen uses up her watercolors faster than most of us painting every day like that. That's awesome, I just love that. Okay, anyway, we're moving on. Let's paint, so handy. Just put the little flap under there. It can sit right next to my paper. Pulled out this Stabilo Aquarellable <laughs> water soluble pencil that we received in a subscription box. I don't even remember which one, but it's been a while. Anyway, when I saw the barrel was red, I'm like, oh cool, red one, but it's not, it's just graphite. So I've been sitting here debating, the painting that I wanna do has some really rich reds and corals in it, and so there's always that debate. Do you start your paper <laughs> off completely wet and let your paint flow like that? Or do you start out with just the paint on dry paper? Because <laughs> when you do just wet paint on dry paper, you have to work really quickly. Otherwise you'll get that hard line, which sometimes you want, sometimes you don't. But if you have water on your paper first, then it will lighten the color that you're putting down. So it's always a debate for me when I'm starting a new painting, how I want to do that, with water or without. Also, I believe we have used this paper before. I think that we had a couple sheets of it in an art subscription box. I don't remember for sure, but it's not that important. Just an interesting fact. <laughs> so what I think I might do, I might do my sky on wet paper and then my snow on dry paper because I really want that snow to be boing, vibrant. <laughs> do you like that sound effect? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think that's how I might deal with that. And then I have a bit of a sun that I need to shine out here. So I'm trying to debate how to do that. I might use some masking fluid for that sun. I might want to sketch where all this is, huh? Yeah, otherwise it'll be like that one I did with the camels where, where my son ended up in the tree and I don't want that to happen. But I also don't want to sketch because, but I did get my pencil out. So apparently I thought I was going to sketch. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Can I just say, I am so excited for this little experiment. See how long it takes to use up watercolors. Now, obviously I am not gonna use all the watercolors in my entire collection because that's impossible. Well, it's probably not impossible, but I don't want to, first of all, but it's fun to take a little like test sample and see how much it takes to use those up and then like do math <laughs> to see how long it would take to use up everything I have in my collection. So I will give you guys a formula too once this whole experiment is done that you can use to kind of calculate how much time it will take for you guys to use up your own watercolors if that's anything you ever wanted to know for some reason. So after all that talk of masking fluid, I was painting along and realized I forgot to mask my son after all. <laughs> so it's one of those days. Also on this masking fluid pin, there's this extra nib here and it keeps poking me and hurting me because it has these sharp little points. It's kind of separated into these little, I don't know, fingers. And I don't like it. So I am pulling it out and I'm putting it back in the opposite direction so maybe it won't eat my hands every time I go to take the lid off. All right, so now I'm masking, but there was something else I wanted to show you. I've let this dry and it's been about 10 minutes, maybe max. And look at the flaking. So there is a lot more flaking than I even saw with the Daniel Smith paints that I showed you earlier in this video. So that is a thing still, it's, it's more, it's more drastic. And then I wanted to show you before we even started painting, but I forgot, is this is what the paints look like right now. So I've barely painted, you know, there's hardly any color on this piece of paper. So you can see how much is left in each pan. And it's probably gonna look pretty much the same when I'm done, we'll see. Just you don't use a lot of watercolor when you're painting. And that's why I think this is going to take a very long time, but I need to know these things. All right, so I'm actually going to use my masking fluid now. 
and I will continue painting. So my masking fluid pin isn't working. I mean, it, it is, kind of. It's just very, very little coming out, probably because it's all gummed up, and I've tried to pull it out, and I just don't have the patience, so I'm just pulling out my big masking fluid, my big jar here, and my little rubber brayer thing. It's not a brayer, it's just a rubber brush, because the masking fluid just falls right off of this rubber brush when it dries, and it's so nice. Now it's stuck to my fingers. Pop the air bubble, dip that right in, and figure out kind of just masking off some nice bright area here. And I really just need to get off the darn procrastination train and go find my heat gun. <laughs> I need to clean my whole house out anyway, so I think I'm like mentally waiting for winter to be over to clean out my house because I think that it's too cold to like put stuff out in tubs outside and a lot of the stuff is in tubs outside. Anyway, my heat gun's in the basement under the stairs, so I know generally where it's at. So I just need to go get the darn thing because <laughs> I get really tired of waiting for things to dry. So real quick here, it seems like the paper is disintegrating right here. So I find that pretty interesting. Yeah, what's up with that? I only have two layers of paint on there so far. Well, three now that I just put the rose on top there that you saw, but yeah, two layers of paint and paper's disintegrating. Seems kind of fishy to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? I've Got a couple of comments in my video when I received this paper or put it on my wish list about it not being so great. So there is that, and I did read those and I do remember them, so thank you for those comments. But what do you guys think? And here I pulled out my rigger brush because I thought I might use it, and then I ended up not. I ended up using this little tiny round two cheapo brush that we got in a subscription box somewhere for trees later. It has been about another 10 minutes, I'm guessing. I still have not gone under the stairs <laughs> to find my heat gun. My son still has ruined my hair dryer, which I haven't seen in years anyway. So I sit and wait because unboxing boxes is a scary prospect for me <laughs> since I don't know where I'm going to put some things. Anyway, take your hand, flip it over, and like down here is still pretty cool. It feels like a cold feeling on my fingers. But up here in the sky is feeling about the same as my skin temperature. So I think that it would be safe to take this off now. And I usually use masking tape. And I always stick the scraps of masking tape. Hang on, I'm over here on my desk getting it. I stick it <laughs> to the edge of my desk. And then I can just pull it off anytime I want. And I kind of roll it up and pull it off. And this masking tape always tends to come off pretty easily. So I do enjoy that about it. There we go. I can soften this edge, which I might do right now before I put in some of my trees, just so that I don't have to mess with my trees doing that. And I think I need a little stiffer brush for that. Yeah, this is a flat I use in a lot of my swatching, just because I got it in a subscription box. It seems to work, whatever. Anyway, it's a little stiffer bristles than these, for example. I'm dipping my brush into clean water, and then I'm just kind of scrubbing along these edges here. A little more water. Might need a stiffer brush yet, which is not surprising. I'm gonna clean that brush, dip it in more water again. Yep, I think I'm going to need, it's not bad, but I think I'm gonna need a little bit stiffer brush. I have a scrubber, but I'm hesitating to use it on this paper because this paper seems to fall apart pretty easily. So these are examples of scrubber brushes here this tiny one and the bigger one. So I'll try it, but I don't have a whole lot of faith in, yeah, the paper, see that is just falling apart. I really wanted to scrub out some sun streaks, but wow, it's just eating the paper. All right, let me try it again with a softer brush and maybe if I have a little more patience with it, you have to clean that brush every time you've kind of grabbed some paint with it. Otherwise, when you go back in, it's just going to do the same thing. It's going to grab the color and put it in your light spots. So that's kind of pointless. So this softer brush is kind of working for these extended streaks up here. I guess I, I should say it is working more than just kind of. It is. It's just, you can tell it's hard on the paper. Not as hard as the little scrubber brush. That's all right. But I am kind of getting the look that I want. I'm going to pull some color back into that one a little bit. Here we go. Clean the brush. Wow, my poor paper. 
It's all good, it's all good. So with this paper, I wonder, maybe you should mask a little bit more of it and then soften the edges, because this just, mm, it's just eating the paper. I'm gonna add a little bit of color back into that one with my palette there. Before I forget, I wanted to mention this paint. This paint re-wets really nicely. It was fun to work with, actually. I really enjoyed it. I had no problems with it at all. I had way more problems with the paper than I did with the paint. So I barely would touch my almost damp brush into some of the pigment, like the black and the purple and the blue that I'm using for these dark trees. And it just got a ton of paint onto my brush, which made it really easy to mix that dark color. It was really fun. I encourage you guys if you have this set maybe use it i mean obviously you don't hang it in the window until we figure out our light fast test that we're doing but definitely use it up here we are one painting down a bunch to go i'm sure <laughs> so this is fun i tried some glowing tree effects i need to practice that some more i will calculate this into the square inches and how much time it took based on the footage I took. And then here is the paint after. And a quick before and after shot for you. So we barely touched, although look at the purple. We have dug into that purple quite a bit. Blue, black, less of the reds than I thought. They spread far and easily. So this is supposed to be a snow scene and I don't know that it really looks like a snow scene necessarily. But I did have a request from one of my viewers, thank you, about showing some of the snow that I have in my area because we do play with snow a lot here and we get a lot of snow here in Colorado. So I'll put in a little video of us playing in the snow because that's what we do every single weekend. So I hope you enjoy that. There's some bloopers, some kitties, all coming up. See you in the next video. Bye for now. So every weekend that we can in the winter, we try and get out on our snowmobiles or do something where we're actually playing in the snow because let's admit it, snow sucks unless you can play in it. So we do our best to play in it. Here is my brother and my son climbing this. It's actually a really, really steep hill. It doesn't look like it in the video, but it is. And since you guys know me and not my brother and son, here's pictures of me. <laughs> There's me on my sled, me and my niece. So I'm the one on the left here eating something, of course and me playing in a snow field. So much fun. Stay tuned for bloopers. In other videos, <clears throat> Pat, really? <laughs> you guys hear him? He's such a brat. Every time I go to talk to you, <laughs> I don't even see him until I go to talk to you guys. Are you helping? Are you helping? Hello. Hi. Hi, gorgeous. Why don't you say hi to the camera? Say hi, Bobo. Look, I have a string. No, leave my dinosaur alone. Come here. Come here, look. He just knocked my dinosaur off my plant. This is the dinosaur I'm talking about. I have it hung over my plant. Kind of like that. Anyway, he knocked it off. Look, I have string. Look, string. He doesn't care. <laughs> string, yeah. <laughs> You're in the way. You're blocking my light. One thing I did want to mention is when I used, oh, now I'm losing the camera here. How do I tighten that? Okay. However, I have been teaching my water cutter, my water cutter, <laughs> my water cutter. Oh, all right. What are we doing? I don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? Which way does that go? Like that, like that. Ah. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enough of this messing around. How come my light looks so weird? Oh, I'm so excited. New to me paper, paints I've barely used, reds, painting, watercolor in general. What could be more fun? Here we go. Any, that's okay. Anyway, I've been sitting here kind of debating because if you are ours, hmm, I know speaky to English. Okay, um, yes, my son ended, ended my, hmm, ah, ugh, English is hard. <laughs>